everyone welcome back to GK today i am mujhe sana and in this video we'll cover the current affairs before we move ahead let me inform you that these questions are part of our daily 20 mcq series 2022 in the gk today's android application so if you are looking for the text version of these questions and their explanations along with the interactive quiz you may consider joining our daily 20 mcq series in the gk today android application in this course in app you get daily 20 mcqs a fortnightly quiz a monthly revision document and also category wise revision ebooks that are optimized for reading on mobile you are also able to access all archives of questions from january 2020 onwards and let me tell you one more thing if you want the hindi version of this session you can refer to our former channel named as gk today the link has been given in the description box from where you can reach to so without taking much of your time let's get started good morning everyone welcome back to gk today and today we'll be discussing most important mcqs for 3rd of february 2022 starting with very first question teli nilapuram international bird sanctuary is located in which state so this bird sanctuary is located in shri kakulam district in the state of andhra pradesh so why it was in news because recently mass death of migratory spot billed pelicans happened in this bird sanctuary so according to the government data about 113 species of exotic birds come to these areas each year from the countries like siberia russia malaysia hungary singapore and germany for breeding purpose okay so this year over 100 birds that prey on nearby water bodies have died okay so that's why it was in news so do remember that this is located in andhra pradesh Now recently, Kazu Valley wetland that is situated in Villapuram district of Tamil Nadu has been declared as the 16th bird sanctuary, and the Kazu Valley wetland is referred to as the second largest brackish water lake in South India. And which one is the first? It is Pulikat Lake. Here we are talking about South India only. Okay. Now talking about Tamil Nadu, Chief Minister is M K Stalin. and governor is r n ravi now do remember that world wetland day is celebrated on 2nd of february and this year means the 2022 marks 15 years of convention of wetlands okay and the theme for this year was wetlands action for people and nature so basic aim is to raise awareness about the crucial role played by the wetlands for the people and for our planet as well okay Now, few days back, we have talked about the Chilka Lake. Why it was in news? Because the Odisha Wildlife Organization has recently conducted a bird census in this Chilka Lake. Do remember that this is the largest brackish water lake. Do not get confused. Here we were talking about only South India, but here it is for whole India. Okay. Also, there is a Nalbana sanctuary located inside the Chilka Lake. Okay. Now can you tell me which is the largest bird sanctuary in whole Asia? It is Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary, which is now called as Kuladio National Park. Okay. So there are some bird sanctuaries which are frequently asked in the exams. Let's see some of them. First is Kuleru Bird Sanctuary. It is in Andhra Pradesh. Then second is Nal Sarovar. It lies in Gujarat. Then third is uh, Sultanpur Bird Sanctuary. it is in haryana now you have to tell me in which state of india mayani bird sanctuary is located please answer me in the comments question number 2 pandit jasraj was associated with which field so he was an indian classical vocalist belonging to the mewati gharana so recently the pandit jasraj cultural foundation was launched which was presided over by the indian prime minister narendra modi so it is a not for profit organization set up with the objective of protecting and promoting the national heritage art and culture so the foundation aims to take forward the legacy of pandit jasraj okay now earlier we have seen that unesco has recently added the nordic clinker boards to its heritage list and the wooden sail boards have allowed the peoples of northern europe to spread influence and trade okay trade across the continents for thousand of years okay So Denmark, Iceland, Finland, Sweden, Norway jointly sought the UNESCO designation. 
Then also we have seen that recently Minister of State for Science and Technology, Mr. Jitendra Singh, has inaugurated the first open rock museum in Hyderabad. So the museum displays about 35 different varieties of rocks from different parts of India and age of those rocks ranges from 33 billion years ago to 55 million years ago. Okay. Also last year, a temple from Telangana named as Rudreshwara Temple has been inscribed on UNESCO's World Heritage Site list. Okay. So this is the 39th World Heritage Site of India and it is located in Palampet in the Mulugu district. Also it was built during the rule of Kakatiya rulers. Okay. Question number three, Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest coral reef system is located in which country? So Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef system located in Australia and Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison has recently announced a further 1 billion Australian dollars to protect this Great Barrier Reef. So the reef is under threat from global warming and the government is criticized for supporting the fossil fuels. Okay. The last month, Indian government has signed an air bubble agreement with Australia under which all the eligible passengers will be allowed to travel between both the countries. Actually, India had suspended all the scheduled international flights operations till 31st of January 2022. So now under this bubble agreement, cargo flights with selected countries continue to operate and India had signed this bilateral air bubble agreement with around 33 countries. Okay, do you remember that Australia is one of them. Now, do you know what is N Sephra, also known as Gateway to Sahara? It is located in the northwest Algeria and the area is surrounded by the Atlas Mountain and it is 1000 meters above the sea level. Okay, so why it is the news? Because recently the Sahara Desert, which is commonly known for its hot and dry climate, witnessed a rare snowfall. So temperatures there dip to minus 2 degrees Celsius near the town of Ansafira, which has a heat record of over 50 degrees Celsius. And the occurrence of rare snowfall this time is due to obviously climate change. Okay. Now do remember that Brisbane city from Australia will be the host of 2032 Olympics. So this is the third Australian city to host the Games of Olympics before Brisbane. Sydney was host in the year 2000 and Melbourne was the host in the year 1956. Okay, so this one is the third city from Australia to host Olympics. Question number four, which country has agreed to cooperate with the European Union on energy security? So USA President Joe Biden and his European Union counterpart Ursula von der Leyen pledged to cooperate on guaranteeing Europe's energy security and they released a joint cooperation statement amidst the standoff triggered by the Russia consolidating troops at the Ukraine's border. And the European Union depends on Russia for around one third of its gas supplies. Fine. Now do remember that South Africa has launched its first satellite constellation developed entirely in Africa. So three locally produced nano satellites, which made up the country's first maritime domain awareness satellite constellations were launched from Cape Canaveral in the USA as part of the Space Access Transporter 3 mission. Fine. Now Pakistani skipper Babar Azam has been named as the captain of ICC men's T20I team of the year for 2021 and Smriti Mandhana is the only Indian woman player named in the women's category. Okay. Do you remember that England's Nat Cyber became the captain of ICC women's T20I team of the year 2021. Fine. Now also Smriti Mandhana was in news because she has recently won the ICC woman cricketer of the year 2021 and she is the second woman player to win this award in the world. Okay. Before her, Alice Perry of Australia was the first woman player to win this award. Fine. Can you tell me when do we observe National Voters Day? Please answer me in the comments. Question number five. Who is the author of the book titled as The $10 Trillion Dream? So former finance secretary 
Subhash Chandra Garg has authored this book and it explores the policy issues that India faces today and it has also suggested the reforms for it to become a 10 trillion dollars economy by the mid 2030s. And talking about Subhash Chandra Garg, he is an IS officer and was appointed as the finance secretary in the year 2019. Okay, so let's talk about some of the important books and authors. The book Fearless Governance has been authored by Kiran Bedi. This book is quite important. Then another book Operation Khatma has been authored by two of the journalists. First is R.C. Ganju and Ashwini Bhatnagar. Then autobiography of Arundhati Bhattacharya is to be released soon. The name of the book is Indomitable, a working woman's notes on life, work and leadership. Okay. Who is Arundhati Bhattacharya? She is retired Indian banker. Also, she is the former first ever woman chairperson of State Bank of India. Then a book on Mamta Banerjee has been written named as Mamta Beyond 2021. And it has been authored by Jayant Ghosal. Then Shashi Tharoor books are quite important. Recently he has released his book Pride, Prejudice and Punditry. Okay. So do remember this has been authored by Shashi Tharoor. Question number 6. Lockbit 2.0 group launched a cyber attack on the Justice Ministry of which country? So France's Justice Ministry has been hit by the cyber attack from a group known as Lockbit 2.0. And the group logged the ministry's files and now they are asking for ransom from the government. So the country has launched investigation on the attack and as per the government sources, no criminal records have been affected till now. Fine. Now Union Agricultural Minister Narendra Singh Tomar announced that 150 villages around the centers of excellence will be converted into villages of excellence with the technical assistance from the country Israel. And 75 villages are being taken up in the first year to commemorate the 75th year of India's independence. And both the countries commemorated the completion of 30 years of diplomatic ties between India and Israel recently. Okay. Now, French Polynesia is an overseas collectivity of France that comprises of more than 100 islands in the South Pacific in Oceania. So, scuba divers with the UNESCO have discovered a massive reef of giant rose-shaped corals off the coast of Tahiti, which is the largest island in the French Polynesia. So the structure is in pristine condition and it has remained healthy despite recent coral bleaching events there. Fine. So if you are asked that French Polynesia is an overseas collectivity of France located in which continent? Answer is Oceania. Now apart from all these things, India ASEAN Digital Work Plan 2022 was approved in the second ASEAN Digital Ministers meeting that was held in virtual mode. So this work plan focuses on tackling the use of stolen and counterfeit mobile handset and Wi-Fi access network interface for the public interest. And also it includes knowledge sharing in emerging areas ICT such as Internet of Things 5G, Advanced Satellite Communication and Cyber Forensics. Fine. So definitely you can be asked that India adopted the Digital Work Plan 2022 along with which block answer is ASEAN. Can you tell me ASEAN has how many members? Question number 7. National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research is research institution under which ministry? So this is a public pharmaceutical research institution under India's Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers. So Union Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers, Mr. Mansukh Mandavia, has launched the Nipar Research Portal to disseminate the information about all the seven Nipars and their research activities. Okay. Now apart from it, in a new study, researchers have found that the highest levels of atmospheric mercury pollution in the world are found in a patch of the Peruvian Amazon and the study shows that illegal gold mining in the Peruvian Amazon is causing record high levels of atmospheric mercury pollution and the birds from this area have up to 12 times more mercury in their systems than the birds from the less polluted areas. Okay. Then apart from it, 
the united kingdom police began a formal probe on the party gate controversy which was seen in the news for weeks so it is said that a birthday party of prime minister boris johnson was conducted amidst the coronavirus restrictions in 2020 and the scandal is being investigated by senior civil servant siu gray and her report is seen as the future of the prime minister now one news from the space current affairs see objects that turn on and off in the universe are called as transients and slow transients like supernova appear over few days and disappear after a few months and fast transients like neutron star pulsar flash on and off within milliseconds or seconds okay so what happened is recently astronomers using the murkison wildlife array telescope have discovered a spinning object that pulses every 18.18 minutes and they suggest that it could be an ultra long period magnetar and it is located at just an ultra long period magnetar from the earth okay so simply this was the news okay question number 8 who has succeeded krishna murthy subramanyam as the chief economic advisor of india so the government has appointed v anatha nageswaran as its chief economic advisor so he was a part time member of economic advisory council to the prime minister from 2019 to 2021 and the upcoming survey has been drafted by a team led by the principal economic advisor sanjeev sanyal now let's revise some of the important appointments first is lieutenant general manoj pandey has been appointed as next army vice chief then roberta metsola takes over as european union parliament presidency after that sher singh d khalia has been appointed as ceo of adani power now our new imf chief is pierre olivier can you tell me he has replaced whom please answer me in the comments the rocket scientist s somnath has become the new isro chief and he has replaced mr k sivan also renew by has its new brand ambassador who's that actress rajkumar rao also do remember that raghuvendra tanwar has been appointed as the chairman of indian council of historical research and narendra kumar goenka has been appointed as new chairman of april export promotion council okay then mr chanchal kumar has been appointed as md of national highways and infrastructure development corporation limited while dilip sanghani is our new chairman of ifco ifco stands for indian farmers fertilizer cooperative and he has succeeded balvinder singh nakai okay do remember that vikram dev dat has been appointed as the chairman and md of air india limited okay so these are some of the important recent appointments question number 9 Xiomara Castro has been sworn in as the first female president of which country so she has been sworn in as the first female president of Honduras and Honduras is a central american country with caribbean sea to the north and the pacific ocean to the south so 12 years ago she led a massive protest movement in response to the ousting of her husband former president Manuel Mel Zelaya in a military backed coup and honduras has the highest rate of femicide in latin america and repressive laws related to the reproductive rights as well okay now let's see some of the recently appointed prime ministers and presidents first is ali khan smilov he has become the new prime minister of the country kazakhstan then prime minister of barbados mia motley has won her second term Also Gabriel Boric has become the youngest president of the country Chile. Then first female president of the country Tunisia is Najla Bordin. Also Czech Republic has appointed Petra Fila as its new prime minister. Then who's the prime minister of Thailand? Last year he has been appointed. It is Prayuth Chan Ocha. Now you have to tell me what was the theme for World AIDS Day? for the year 2021 please answer me in the comments now coming to last question 
which state or union territory has approved ex gratia relief of 20000 rupees per acre to the farmers so the delhi cabinet has approved ex gratia relief of 20000 rupees per acre to the farmers whose lands were damaged by the rains last year and in the month of september to october 2021 Several acres of farmland were damaged due to the heavy rain and water loggings in the fields. So if the damage is found to be 70% or less, the compensation will be 70% of the amount. But if the excess loss is more than 70%, 20,000 rupees per acre will be paid. Okay. So this relief is to be given to Delhi people. Now the government of Tamil Nadu has framed a draft policy for the senior citizens acknowledging the state's demographic transition and the policy also proposes to create a directorate for the welfare of the senior citizens. So this draft document is based on article 41 of the Indian constitution which requires the state to secure the right to work, education and to public assistance in cases of unemployment, old age, sickness and disablement. Okay. Now Delhi government has recently launched a one-stop website for the promotion of electric vehicles. Also, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has recently hosted the first India Central Asia Summit in a virtual format. And as per the External Affairs Ministry, presidents of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan participated in the virtual summit. Okay. Now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide you can see 5 questions which have been taken from the past 2-3 days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today. And we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, Meenu Zatsana signing off.